welcome to the Entrepreneur Success Formula podcast, where we get down to earth with real entrepreneurs, you know, the ones who work hard and know that success is more than just a mindset, because it takes blood, guts, and a bucket full of luck to survive and thrive in the world of business today. My name is Damien Mark Smith, and I am the host of the show and author of the Entrepreneur Success Formula, how thriving business owners actually do it. And in this episode, I am speaking with someone who knows all about blood, guts, and a bucket full of luck. It's Peter Simmons, who's a vet based in Western Australia in Perth, I love Perth, uh, who is going to be talking this morning uh, and this evening for him uh, about brain fuel depletion, making sense of anxiety and depression, which is a book he wrote a few years ago. And he's recently done a fantastic little video on YouTube, and I'm going to put it in the uh, the show notes because I thought it was hilarious and absolutely brilliant. And brain fuel depletion is a simple explanation of how and why the condition called a depression occurs. So Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks, Damien. I'm glad to be on. <laughs> Great to have you. So uh, tell me a little bit about, I mean, let's let's talk about the book, actually, because um, obviously you're a vet. And, you know, in the video, you talk about, uh, you know, there's a great line where you say, you know, these people, these clients that you work with, they can't talk to you, which is absolutely spot on. So, you know, how did you kind of discover this? What, what you know, t- take us back a few years and give us the, the lead up to this. Um, Well, firstly, I've got a personal interest in the topic because um, I've had three brain hemorrhages and I got over them quite well. But after the third, physically, I was okay, but psychologically, there was something wrong. And I was a bit puzzled because I'd I'd recovered quite well from brain surgery and brain hemorrhages before. But in that case, I went down the drain for um, probably six months and I realised in the end that I'd been a a bit bit depressed um, before I went in. And I was much more depressed when I got out, mainly because they woke me every hour for five days. Right. So eventually, um, after six months, and I was suicidal the last two, I was diagnosed with depression. And I said, well, I'm never sad. So I said, I haven't got that condition. But my doctor said, it doesn't work like that. Um, you know, you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be depressed to have this condition. I said, well, that's a stupid name. If it's the main symptom of this condition, the name of the condition is a symptom I didn't have. And it was much worse than having three brain hemorrhages. I said, it's badly named. So one thing I learned as a vet was um, animals don't talk. So you've got to develop different instincts for trying to work out the problem. The other one to get through vet school is is I worked out with all the diseases because I, I, as I say to a doctor, a doctor's got one patient, got one species. We've got thousands of them. And I said, the best thing for me to work out a disease was etiology, what is the actual cause and pathogenesis, how does it cause disease? And I said, this condition, which is an epidemic worldwide, which is, um, it, it's very confusing condition. People are at their worst. It's got to have an explanation that is simple so people can work out what's wrong with them. And if it's a good, simple explanation, they can understand the problem. They'll work out the solutions. And I said, that is completely lacking with this condition. I then fortuitously met a guy who um, had worked it out. It was his name, brain fuel depletion. He doesn't write and I did. I said, this has got to be written down. It's got to be made simple so that it's accessible to people that are suffering. And I wrote the book. It took me eight years, Damien. Um, I had a couple of reruns because I had to learn how to write it. But the whole aim was simple. I said, if it's not easy to read, they'll put it down. So that's what it was. And the main thing we do describe a model, the simple model is, is in chapter three. That's probably all you have to read. Um, well, that's certainly the most important chapter. So give, give us a kind of like highlight of that. So what, what is brain fuel depletion and then how do you kind of address it? Um, well, well, brain fuel depletion, as I said, it's fairly simple. Brain fuels are neurotransmitters. So um, the technical name is neurotransmitter. You in your head have got 100 billion neurons. Some of those neurons have 10,000 um, connections to other neurons. So, so there's, there's trillions of connections. They're all chemical connections. So you need neurotransmitters to interlink your brain to make it the miraculous organ that it is. Now you deplete these every day. Deplete your brain fuels or your neurotransmitters every night with good quality relaxation, good quality sleep and relaxation. You replete them, you get back to normal. Um, if you get stress, if you've got a, a, an issue at work or an issue at home or your kids on drugs, or you've got all three, you can deplete your brain fuels. Now, if you solve the problem quickly, they'll bounce back up. If the situation doesn't change and it goes on for days or weeks or months or years, you'll slowly track down with your brain fuels. So that'll give you a certain set of symptoms when your brain fuels aren't at their optimum. Uh, What happens then is adrenaline kicks in. 
So your brain feels deplete, adrenaline kicks in to keep the body running, and adrenaline explains most of the really severe symptoms, which were mine, insomnia, anxiety. Adrenaline's the fight or flight hormone, so you get um, people become angry, irritable, and frustrated. Some, some people go into flight mode and become remote and withdrawn, and some people, could be managers in a business, do both. They walk in, upset everybody, and then withdraw when they should be solving problems. Mm. Um, so once I understood that, I said, that explained my anxiety, the panic I was getting, the, ang- the, the insomnia, and also when the brain feels deplete, that explains what lack of problem-solving skills, that sort of thing, and also some in- irrational beliefs. People just aren't at their best to try and work out the solution to the problem, but you know, other things as well. The brain controls the body. If the brain fuels are depleted, then you get physical symptoms. That confuses a lot of people. You can get irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue. There's a few others, and it confuses people if they go to the doctor and the doctor says, you've got um, a particular, you've got a physical symptom. He said, here, take a happy pill. So they don't take the antidepressant because they don't understand how it could manifest in physical symptoms. But our model, you know, I think, um, and it's Clyde Jumeau's model, the doctor that I work with, I think it makes it fairly clear. So how do you go about repleting the brain? I mean, obviously you talked about sleep, and if you're in a downward spiral of insomnia, you know, because uh, my girlfriend, I mean, she's, she's right, she's there at the moment. She's, she's actually got hormonal changes, you know, going through the, the, the menopause and the perimenopause. Um, yep. And she, she's taken on a new job. And now the new job is very, very challenging. So she's now getting, she's, not, she's getting less than six hours sleep a night and, and it's kind of a downward spiral. So how do you then go about repleting uh, the brain? Okay, well, well, what we say, if you accept the brain fuel depletion model, you say, okay, I now need to replete my brain fuel. So the, the first step that we say the book is, is knowledge and hope. You explain the brain fuel model, you give them hope. I, when I speak, I try to say to people, well, look, you know, I've had it and I got over it. Yeah. Then we look at all the non-drug um, activities you can do to uh, replete your brain fuels. And there's stuff your grandmother told you. Uh, but they're, they're basics. They're better explained in a, in a book by Steve Alardi. But it's sleep and light. They're, they're interlinked. You probably need, you need to get natural light. So perhaps you go out and work at dusk and sort of you see the sun go down, the melatonin kicks in, and then you've got to make sure you've got good quality sleep. So you've had the light. You don't have blue light late in, into your face late into the night. Mm-hmm. You get some natural light. You go to bed. Sleep is, is, is sacred. So you make sure you've got perfect sleep hygiene and that sort of thing in the bedroom. Um, you don't have any distractions or interruptions and you've actually got to train. You've got to practice sleeping, practice deep relaxation. But sleep and light are two key factors. The trouble with this condition is the adrenaline ruins your sleep, which yeah. is what you need to save yourself. The other two are, as, as your grandmother tells you, activity. And it's got to be good quality activity. Like, for example, doing helping people or working in a volunteer organisation or coaching. So you're doing things with meaning for you. So you give yourself purpose in life. You need connection, good connection. So family connections, but it might be people you actually work with in, in, in the activity that, that are uplifting. We say that the 80-20 rule applies with your friends. You know, 20% of your friends give you 80% of the enjoyment. Indulge the, the 20%, the ones that uplift you. Get rid of the ones that are negative or talk you down. The other two factors are exercise. And they say antidepressants are the equivalent to exercise. Exercise has got so many benefits, um, but you know, once again, it's, it's got a mental health benefit as well. People I swim with, some of them say, look, I'm down here for my mental health. So you get exercise and the other one is um, nutrition. And there are things, deep sea fish has got tryptophan and the, the, the base products of what neurotransmitters are, are made from and equally other foods, and they're, they're all good quality foods. They're the vegetables and the fruit have good quality nutrition as opposed to trans fats and processed foods and those sort of things. So I say to people, if you want to get better, and most people with this condition do, I say, do the lot, do everything. I think then you convince yourself you're going to get better because you deserve to get better. Um, As I say, the big thing is talking about sleep. And I, I mentioned in the video is a tired body and a quiet mind. So you exercise and you get the tired body um, you need the quiet mind, but what we probably say with this is once you lift your brain fuels, once you feel a bit better, 
once you, 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 you've got a little bit of energy back and a bit of drive, you've got to look at what the issue was. There's a reason you got sick. Why did you get sick? And then you, no one wants to do it again. I, I say to people, don't take antidepressants to, to sustain, perpetuate the same stupid lifestyle you, that got you sick. Use them to find out what the issues are. Now, for example, uh, hormonal issues with a, with a woman. Well, you can't do much about that. But if you stack that on with a job, uh, a new job, uh, and maybe some other stresses as well, try to take on four or five things, well, you're probably going to go down the drain. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through, let's say, hormonal issues or menopause, then you might say, well, look, I'm not going to make too many changes. I'm not going to move house. I'm not going to do all the other things. I might have to change jobs, but understand the process. Try and minimise them. Um, and, you know, with Clyde, he said, sometimes he says, I alter the antidepressant medication just when things become a little bit stressful because I'm very wary of my brain feels and protecting them and the fact that I might be using a bit more when I make a lot of change in my life or something happens to me. Are there um, uh, supplements or, or, I mean, obviously you mentioned like, yeah, the DC fish. Are there supplements that people can take? Because some people have like mixed views about supplements. They say they're not good, quite good enough quality. Um, I didn't hear the last bit you said about what the particular Some, sometimes type of people say that supplements aren't, aren't, aren't good enough quality um, as obviously the real thing but are there supplements that you would recommend that people could take for this um, well really I, I take an antidepressant um, just just quickly um, because I, 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 I was didn't know what was wrong with me I was just trying harder but eventually when I found out I realized I was doing a lot of things right. I was exercising and I didn't have stress and that sort of thing, but I needed to turn the corner. So antidepressants made, made a big difference for me. I, I think they saved my life. So I took them low dose antidepressant that I'm still on. As far as, um, so that just seemed to turn the corner for me. Then I addressed the, the issue. Um, but as far as supplements go, I think, you know, probably a good quality vitamin probably doesn't hurt. Um, just in case, but good yeah. diet should cover that. But I think fish oil is the one. Yeah. Um, but I I'm on fish oil. I'm on a range. I've got a heart problem. I'm on a range of things for that. Um, but an, an antidepressant. That's what I do. So, um, I, but I think if, if you get the diet right, you know, good quality, you know, vegetables. Yeah. You know, there's a range of things. There's a lot of information out there. I'm not sure that you need too many other. But I think fish oil has got plenty of benefits. And as I say, I'm on an antidepressant. 20 milligrams of arrow packs. And uh, I'm not going to stop. I'm going okay. <laughs> I'm pretty happy now. If people think less of me because I'm an antidepressant, I couldn't care less because my family and my friends uh, are, are reasonably happy. And, and the big thing is I'm fairly happy how I'm going. Well, that's the important thing, isn't it? And um, so in terms of obviously the work that you do day to day, you, are you still a vet now? Yeah, Yeah, I, I'm semi-retired. So I, I work at the races. I work with horse trainers. Mm. People say, what do you do? I said, I'm involved in drugs and gambling. <laughs> but I, I go to the races and I uh, make sure the horses are okay. I talk to the trainers. If, if the horse gets injured, I treat it. But I do a couple of days a week. Um, I, I, I used to, I'm a doer. I did a lot. I was doing about eight things, but I say, now I do some work. Now I do family. And then I've got another component of things I do. It's helping people. So I do this stuff. There's no money in it, but I do it because I believe in it. And I don't want anybody to suffer like me. But also I coach kids water polo, but that's probably my activity and that's connection and everything else. So they're the sort of three things I look at. I cut down because I used to think anything was possible. I, I went down, the, I, I was getting a bit depressed for about 10 years. Then I went to hospital and then I got really bad. And I said, it was a great thing in the end because then I found out what I'd been doing, what had been wrong with me. And I didn't get back to where I was. I got back to where I was in my twenties. Um, you know, I, I knew the problem, I could eliminate it, and I'm ruthless looking after myself and avoiding my bad habit, which is trying to do too much. So what would you say are like the top three most important uh, tips for anyone who, who can try and get their brain back on track? Well, like I said, you need to understand the condition and um, you understand that it could happen to you. And it's an epidemic. Depression is depression or anxiety whatever they are we we think they both run together but it's a mass problem i said you need to understand and that the brain field depletion model explains that it's not you know damien's 100 percent and i'm i am I'm got major depression you can be all levels in between up and down so i say you need to understand that it happens you need the knowledge of what's happening to you so you can be 
hyper aware of that. Um, once you know that, then you you you, you do the activities that they, you know the six activities that I mentioned um, are the things that your grandmother says that are all good for your physical health, for your mental health. Yeah, there's so many different things they're good for, and uh, then I think you've got to say, well, issues, and you're like, everyone's got them. If you've got a mental health problem, you've got to deal with the issues. If you haven't got a mental health, you should think about issues and and uh, just just try and make sure that you know they're not going to weigh you down. Um, de deal with things, and you. I think that's that's the key thing. It's there's a lot of clutter in the world. There's social media. There's everything weighing down on you. I think you need to dissect out the things that matter, the things you want to follow, the things you want to be a bit immune from, which is marketing and advertising for girls with body image. So I think you need to be aware of the enemy as well. Um, I think I think it's just awareness of what life's like now and um, the fact that there is a solution. The, the problem is relatively simple, and um, you know, understand the solution and work on it. The other thing we say, if, if, if I talk to people about this, I say, look, it might not be you. You walk out of here, it's gonna be your aunt or your uncle or your brother, or your sister or your, your kid or something, this is everywhere. And when you see fundamental change in people that you may have liked, this is the first thing to think of. Fantastic. So what are you doing apart from, you know, coming on shows like this one to, to, to get this message out there? Because obviously you said, at the moment, there's uh, with COVID-19, there's there's a, there's a lot of people that are feeling very depressed about the situation, about the lack of jobs. Um, so, what are you doing to get this uh, this message out there? Um, well, probably talking to you, Damien. Um, <laughs> I, I think what, when I looked at it, I said there's a whole kaleidoscope of, um, of, of, of solutions. There's a heap of stuff. There's a lot of books. There's a heap of stuff online and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I said, there's a lot. All we do is have an explanation. So we're one small pocket in this, all this other sort of stuff. And we said, we've got a bit of an explanation. And I said, I've got to get this explanation out. I haven't been that effective, but it's simple and it helps. Now, it might not help everybody. If you had my symptoms, I'm sure it helps. But if you had other symptoms, which people can get, um, you know, well, maybe it's not for you, but I'm saying this is, is an explanation that helps some people. I said, I've just got to get it out there. And I've particularly got it out, get it out there when, well, it's a problem anyway, but when you get COVID, I think the big thing is uncertainty. Yeah. What's yeah. going to happen? Particularly younger people, they lose their job. They're looking at an uncertain economic future. Am I ever going to get ahead? You've got all the other stuff of the isolation, the lockdown and everything else. But if you haven't got hope in your life, that is one of the critical things. So I thought, let's get this model out. And I, so I spoke to somebody about doing some podcasts and doing things differently. Um, but I said, get it out there. And, and I made everything free. So I've got the three minute video that you've seen that I put together. And then there's a 30 minute video that follows up if people want more detail. The first three chapters of the book are free and the third chapter's got the model. And I said, I'm just going to give this away so that if, if people get a little bit of help out of it, um, and it could help, we'll go for it, particularly in this time when uh, there's so much uncertainty. If you want a hard copy, you've got to pay because it cost me $11 Australian to uh, get them printed. So I don't <laughs> give them away. I don't want to go broke trying to help people. It's pretty well all free. But I just see that that package there. And then you can look for brain fuel repleting um, strategies and, and all sorts of stuff on the internet. There, there, there's probably stuff everywhere, but that might be the prism you look at it through. Because as I say, I'm a vet. I um, got some medical knowledge. I've had plenty of medical problems. I'm not scared to go to doctors. And even I was there completely lost. I didn't know what was wrong with me because I never felt sad. Yeah. And I considered suicide two months every day. I thought about it. And I'm a uh, I, I had the means. I had a gun in the car and I had, um, I've got, well, Green Dream, we call it. It's a euthanasia solution. It's always green. So you don't mistakenly eject it for something else. But um, so that, that that's the point. Let people know. Give them a simple explanation. And um, if it helps, great. And every now and again, I get an email or somebody says something nice. They say, thank you. And I say, well, that's enough. I'm glad I wrote the book. Fantastic. Well, Peter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the uh, the links to all of those in the show notes. So, um, and you know, for anyone who's listening to this, who usually listens to the show where we do the entrepreneur success formula, one of the reasons that I actually wanted to get Peter on the show as well is, is the, the branding for the entrepreneur success, success formula. I'm actually changing it to success formula, uh, because there's a new program and new, a new book that's going to be coming out called mindset success formula. 
and uh, and and we're going to be talking about all of these uh, these topics. You know, as as Peter says, uh, you know, depression, which is um, I think that as I think he mentions the silent silent epidemic in the modern world. It's it's Googled. Why what depression is Googled nine million times a, a month? The question: What is depression? And uh, is it's depression? on the rise. So we're going to be we're going to be ad- we're going to be addressing. No- well, I mean, I think the there is hope. And, and you know you talk about knowledge and hope, and I think there is hope. Uh, and 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 bringing the two together, especially for younger people, uh, is you know use your skills, uh, create a business model. Uh, you know you there are ways you can create businesses. There are we, we also you know people like YouTubers and people writing books at the moment and doing videos and all sorts of great stuff on TikTok. You know there is pot there is hope for you. Um, but but more importantly, understanding your you, especially if you're younger. You know, there's never been a better time to be alive because we are discovering things that, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, we had absolutely no hope of discovering. So, Peter, you know, thank you and uh, Dr. Clyde Jamo for, for writing the book and for, uh, you know, offering the first three chapters up. And uh, I'll, I'll put the links in there uh, to the show notes. And um, is there anything else you would like to kind of add before we uh, sign off today? Yes. Entrepreneurs are big brain fuel users. And they're a primary person for this particular condition. So uh, I say it's a mark of honor having this condition. If you haven't got it, you probably haven't tried it hard enough. But entrepreneurs <laughs> are the people that need to be energetic and up and going. And they're, they're classic people. And, you know, inspiring that they need to watch out this condition. We say just quickly, there's five personality types that, that we particularly watch for. Doers like myself, carers that did what they call compassion fatigue. Creative people, if they're creative 24 hours a day, Robin Williams and, you know, there's a range of other people. Elite performers, such as athletes, plenty of mental health problems there. And um, perfectionists. If you want to be perfect with everything, it's a tough life. But we say don't change. If you've got those characteristics that probably made you successful, you need to modify them. If you're perfectionist, be perfect at 10% of things that really matter. Let a few others slide or uh, these problems but yeah it fits in perfectly with entrepreneurs big part of the whole thing is not you know working you, you're busy you're interested 24 hours a day because it's, it's yours got to be careful brilliant peter thanks so much for coming on the show it was an incredible insight into your book and uh, and a really nice direction to take the show as well so thanks very much for that no thank you and well done on the work you do helping thanks people it's great so if anyone else would like to come on the show and talk either about entrepreneurship or, or mindset or mental health or anything else around a success formula that maybe you've had, maybe that could be a parenting or a relationship success formula, please get in touch with Damien and with an A, D-A-M-I-A-N at rethinkingbusiness.biz and let me know and we can have a chat and get you on the show. So here's to your future success and the work you're doing, Peter. And uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you.